Right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a for loop. And a for loop is used to repeat a bunch of code a known number of times. So a while loop might run forever or until a condition is met. For loop, we know how many times we want to run the code, right? How many times we want to loop through it. I'm using a for loop to kind of make these parts disappear and reappear. I will show you how to do that. That will be our objective today. So let's go ahead and get a fresh world and learn about for loops. All right, so here's a fresh world. Let's go ahead and add a part. We're gonna put the script on the part because we're gonna make it disappear and reappear, right? Not immediately, but soon. Let's just move it up a little bit. You can make it a color if you want, like lime green, and then anchor it so it doesn't fall. Cool. All right, now go to the part, maybe rename it, rename it to uh, change viz, right? It doesn't have to be spelled the same as mine. Just have it so that it makes sense. You don't want everything named as part, right? All right, so then add a, hit that plus sign on change viz part, add a script, and then in this script, I might call this visibility. Visibility, cool. All right, let's make that a little bigger so you can read it. And let's make a for loop. So I'm gonna say for i equals one, comma five, comma one, two. What does that mean? Well, this is the beginning of my loop. The code in here is gonna be what's repeated. That's the end of the loop. So if I do something like this, print i equals i, we are going, oh, I spelled print wrong. We're gonna print i five times. How do I know that? Well, i is the loop counter. It's gonna start at one. It's gonna stop when it hits five and it's going to increase in increments of one. So there are three parts of a for loop, right? You have the start, the stop, and the amount you're going to increase or decrease the value, right? In this case, we're increasing it. So that I changes each time. Let's go ahead and print that out. We're gonna see I change. Let's do a little wait for effect, right? 0.1 seconds. Let's go to view, output. So we see our output window, we'll make that bigger. Cool. And then go back to home, hit play. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. It wasn't very smooth because we were on startup. But you can see how I changed from one to two to three to four to five. So this for loop executed these two lines of code five times. If we do this, right, we go to nine or eight, nine, let's do nine, nine, right? We would normally we'd do nine iterations of the loop. If we made this two, we would increment by two. We'd increment i by two. So we go one, three, five, seven, nine, right? We wouldn't have nine uh, printouts. Let's check it. We'd have one, three, five, seven, and nine. We have five printouts. We're going to nine in steps of two. Awesome. All right. You're like, so what? Let's make that thing turn invisible. All right, that's not too bad. I wanna do one more thing though. I wanna go from five down to one. And because we're going in reverse order, we're gonna do it in steps of negative one. So now I is gonna go five, four, three, two, one, because we're gonna subtract one every iteration of the loop. And let's write something cool like intermission ending in, and that will give the number. Play, five, four, three, two. oh, you know what? We gotta increase our weight, right? Because we're, we're implying seconds. There we go. Five, four, three, two, one. I should have done something cool, but I didn't. Anyway, you get the idea. We can count backwards, we can count forwards, and we don't have to count in steps of one. In fact, when we go to do our transmissivity, of our part, let's get our part. Local part equals, well, the script is on the part, so we can say script dot parent. Ah, oh, that's the part, that's the script, that's the parent. So we got the part. Let's wait five seconds to get in. Wait, five, all right? Take a look at the part real quick. Go to base plate, see that part? Trans transparency, that's what we wanna change. Zero is fully opaque, you can't see through it. One is fully transparent. You can't 
see it at all, right? It's, it's invisible, right? So 0.5 is 50% transparent. So we need to go from zero to one, right? We're not going one to five, we're going zero to one. Let's, let's put this back to zero. Cool. Let's go back to our script. We need to go from zero to one, right? And we need to go in steps less than one, right? We need to go in like 0.1, right? Because we did 0.5, that was 50%. So this is going to be 10%, the first iteration of the loop. Then it's going to be 20%, 30%. This is often called decimal percentages. It means between zero and one, right? When you use normal percentages, you just multiply everything by 100. And this 0.1 is going to take, this, or that one second, that's too long. Let's make that 0.1. Cool. And now we got our i. We'll just make this i equals, right? Because it's not an intermission, right? And then we'll say part transparency equals i. And that's going to work out great, right? Because it's going to start out at 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. You got it. Let's play it. We're going to wait five seconds. And voila, it's gone. Notice this. Notice this round off error, right? Because we're using decimals, so now we're going to start getting round off error. If we're using integers like 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, then we wouldn't get that round off error, but with numbers we do. So if you look at my stealth mode video, you'll see uh, in my visibility drink, you'll see that I make a buffer if, in case of round off error. We'll get more into that. Just know that that's about one, right? That's really close to one. That's really close to 0 0.9. You just have a little bit of error on there. All right. So let's get rid of that. We got to fully invisible. Let's go ahead and switch directions. I'm going to copy this. Control C. Control V. Paste that. All right. And then let's go from one down to zero, and since we're going in the opposite direction, we're going to do a negative 0.1. That's going to make it reappear. You might be asking yourself, why am I doing these, these indents? Well, since this is the beginning of a code block, the for loop, this is the end of a code block, this is a code block, right? We usually indent when we have a new code block. And, and you'll, you'll, get, you'll get better at it. You just mimic me for a while, and then you'll start understanding it, right? It's more for organization, unless you're doing Python. And Python, if you get this indent wrong, it's an error. But in Lua, you don't need to do that. It just looks sloppy if you don't do it. Let's take a look what we got. All right, so this should disappear. There we go. And then reappear. Cool. All right, let's do this. Let's hit the stop. And now I am going to wrap this whole thing in a while loop. I'll say while true do. And the end of that while loop is going to be way down here. And you can see how we kind of messed up our code block. Check this out. Our indents aren't right, obviously, because this is the whole code block. Let's go to format, format document. Oh, look at that. Cool beans. All right, so everything in here is in the while loop, right? That's the end of the while. That gets really tricky over if you get too many loops and stuff. Let's go ahead and just put like a tiny weight in here. Actually, let's make a variable called pause, right? We'll do this. We'll say local rnd for random number generator. We'll get our ran we'll get a new random number generator. And then We'll do our pause. That's going to be rnd colon. We want next number, not next integer, because we want to do it between 0 0.03, which is the fastest weight we can have. And then maybe we'll go to 1. Point, no, not that high. Let's go to 0.18 or something. Maybe 0.2. There we go. So it's going to put a weight in between there. And that way, we have some randomness. 
I'm going to change those point ones to my pause value. Maybe put one down here too. Wait, pause. All right, so what are we doing? We're going to do a loop. It's going to run forever because it's while true, true will always be true. We're going to go through here, changing the transparency to more and more invisible each iteration of the loop with a tiny little pause. We're going to wait a little bit and then we're going to turn it visible again with tiny little pauses in between each change, wait again, and then do it all over again forever and ever. Why did I make this random? Well, we'll play it now. If we copy that ball and we want different effects from all the other balls, we need to have some randomness in it. All right, so that's going pretty quick. Let's do this. Let's make a few copies of that. All right? Let's say control, I have collisions off, so if I hit control D, I duplicate in place. All right? Maybe another control D. Now I'm going to get all three of those. Do a control D. Oh, I missed one. Oh, well, that's okay. Control D, boom. And then maybe let's just do one more. Control D. Sweet. And of course you can change them to different colors. Now when we enter the game, we're going to have a random effect. They're all going to start pretty similar, but some are going to go faster and slower, different pause values. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so now you know about, this is the basic for loop. Uh, that's in almost every programming language. In the next video, we're going to do a for loop in pairs, and then we're going to introduce collections like arrays and tables. Then you're going to be able to do even more cool stuff. All right, I will see you in the next video.